Hello from Victoria Mansion. Although we've been mothballed, so to speak, for about 13 months now, the work in the conservation and restoration of the mansion's parlour that began two years ago has been ongoing and um, is almost to the point of completion. So today, as we anticipate, um, hoping to be able to open up the mansion in July, I thought we'd have a 10 minute sort of peek into the mansion's parlour and specifically looking at Gustav Herter's integrated design schema, which is based around the theme of playful love, incorporating mythology, seduction, mischief, and whimsy. So let's just go inside. So the integrated design for which um, Herter was essentially um, known as the father, if you like, the father of integrated interior design, starts from the very moment you're moving from the hallway into the parlor itself. Right above the threshold, as you enter the parlor, there is this wonderful lunette of prudence, one of the four cardinal virtues. And it's a deliciously wonderful and playful contrast between this virtue, the, one of the most uh, four cardinal virtues, and this entry into this whimsical sort of environment of amorous play and seductive love. So Herta's task was to really demonstrate through design and so on, or it be an exposition, if you like, of, of Morse's sophisticated sense of style, erudition, wealth, and awareness of the, the most leading styles that were prevalent in 19th century Europe. And through Herta's magisterial thematic unity, supported with the amazing artwork and, and painterly work of Guidicini and an anonymous artist, um, he really has achieved this goal. So as every room in the house has its own theme, um, this parlor echoes the 17th century French Baroque style, particularly the Palace of Versailles with its long floor to ceiling uh, pier mirrors and so on. The palette is also Versailles-like, pale monochromatic colours, which contrast deliciously with the vivid themes that we'll see in the tondi and the various um, th themes that are captured in these little lunettes and so on in the room. So the theme is amorous play. Um, and this reminded me a little bit of the French Rococo style, particularly that uh, presented by uh, Jean-Honoré Fragonard. And here I've given us an image of the swing, which he painted in 1767 and is in the Wallace collection in London. Again, this rich, rich romantic environment, this wonderful flouncy pink dress. And here we have the lover down in the corner gazing ecstatically up at his beloved and the older gentleman here, perhaps her husband in the corner here. And then we have the image of this winged figure, this Cupid or Puto, with his hands, fingers to his lips, hushing as though his lips are sealed. And the central tondi in this in our parlor have actually been taken from um, the Book of the Iliad, Book Four, and talks about the seduction of Jupiter by Juno with the help of Venus. So the room has this representation of high art and this reiteration of Venus iconography, particularly the, the garlands of flowers that were the passementary and also the shell um, themes that we'll see throughout the room. So here's one of the first two tondi um, in the center of the uh, ceiling of the parlor. They were removed to over two years ago for restoration and you can see why. Here's on the left is Juno consulting Venus to receive Venus's girdle, the wearer of which becomes irresistibly seductive. And that's part of Juno's plan is to be able to seduce Jupiter so that she can have her way with him and change his mind about his intervention in the Trojan Wars. So here they are, um, very, very uh, diminished. And here to the right is the same tondo now reinstalled about two months ago uh, by Giacomo Pocobene and uh, his crew. Quite, quite the transformation. The second was actually the outcome of Juno and Venus's plan. 
Here we see June, Jupiter's love reignited for Juno because of that irresistible passion that she exudes thanks to the girdle. Again, here's the before just taken down from the ceiling. It was removed and taken to uh, Giacomo Pocobeni's workshop down in Massachusetts, and it was just restored. And again, the difference is absolutely staggering. All that was hidden of the original brilliance is now revealed. This is not painted by Guidicini, and there is no signature or any indication who the artist was. But clearly, this was sort of an outside, outsourced task um, that Guidicini and Herta um, had, had commissioned. Now, the theme of um, this playful love and, and uh, seduction and, and hopeless falling in love isn't just in the artwork, it's also captured in the central uh, gasolier. And you'll notice these three figures up at the top here are three cupids. And as I've put these sort of red lines here to indicate the, the trajectory of the arrows that they would be shooting to try and uh, embrace other people in love as they entered the room. So one pointing to the door and then two to either side of the parlor. Just this wonderful, subtle and playful integration of theme. And here's a close up. You can see the three cupids right there at the top of the gasolier um, and Guidicini's wonderful scroll work above it in the ceiling, playing with the scroll work of the gasolier. And over to the right is one of the um, cupids that is still to be restored. Um, and actually does not belong on the gasolier, but in two other areas of the room um, from which they've been missing for a number of years. So where are those places? First is there were two gasoliers on either side of the pier mirror on each end of the parlor. And you can see here a close up of one of the um, cupids firing additional arrows metaphorically at the people conversing and chatting in this um, room. And there again is the one um, cupid that needs to be uh, restored and will be um, shortly. But there's another place that you'll be um, in cupid's crosshairs. And that's um, right above the fireplace in that magnificent mirror there. Again, there were two gasoliers on either side of the mirror with the little Cupid ready, aiming and firing towards you um, unwittingly. And Cupid is famous for his attendants, the Puti. And here we see above the fireplace three, three Puti playing musical instruments. Again, sort of this theme of the arts that we saw in the reception room is, is woven into the parlor as well. And they're seated in these wonderful billowing clouds. And again, I suspect that Herta was reminding, remembering Fragonard's work. So here's this piece um, by Fragonard, The Swarm of Cupids, again painted around 1767 and currently at the Louvre in Paris. And again, you can see these chubby little playful, ululating, pullulating uh, putti in these wonderful clouds. And here are some more sedate putti. But again, these are in the four corners of the ceiling uh, design with the two tondi in, in the center. And we see again the, the cerebral piece, if you like here, of the design. We have literature, music, letters, and sculpture, some of the four primary high arts. Um, again, these are painted by a, an anonymous painter, but these, the painting and scroll work and so on around them are uh, Guidicini's masterful um, the creations. And then again, we see this shell of Venus, again, integrating, reminding us of the role of, of Venus, the god of goddess of love. So the conservation and restoration is almost complete. Um, and we are, it's revealed what was originally magnificent and then shadowed, shaded for over 160 years. And the work led by Gianfranco Pocobeni and Siobhan Lindsay um, and their crew has been quite extraordinary. And these are just a few little images of the gasolier, which has been broken into its multiple, multiple parts so that each part can be uh, restored. 
by Lindsay um, at the at the museum, and they will all be put back together again carefully um, to recreate, re restore to its magnificence the that central gasolier. So I think the words of this last slide echo all our sentiments that we so look forward to being able to open Victoria Mansion, hopefully after July 1st. And not only will we be seeing the mansion again, but we will be seeing the revealed, re renovated, conserved parlor, um, which is actually thrilling to see, as I put here, the sparkling magnificence of the newly revitalized and yes, seductive beauty of the parlor. We hope to see you there.